Welcome back, everyone, to the Librarium of Ludus and Finial, where you can find RPG and RTS playthroughs, and many more playthroughs in between. And for fans or those new to 40k, I also do 40k lore. Let's see what adventure we have for you today during this Long Camera Weekend. When the 10th Company land on 6319, we are shown. I guess, uh, a few different things. One is that Xavier Jubal, the sergeant of First Company, felt, he felt kind of like he was done wrong by Logan. Because Logan, instead of choosing him to be his, basically his commander when he's not there, he chose Nero Vipus. And in order to appease Jubal, Loken instead made him the leader of the police action kind of attack on 6319. So he he knew that he felt slighted and wronged about it. So he did try to make it up to him in a roundabout way. And we're also shown something else. They have the Terminators lead the attack. Terminators are new at this point, and there are legions that don't even have Terminators yet. And because Horus is the War Master and he's the favored son, his legion was one of the first. And we are we are told what Terminators effectively are. They're bigger bulkier, and it's basically a walking tank. They, in this case, <laughs> completely negate small arms fire. In the lore, for the most part, they they can take any small arms fire and be fine. What you have to start watching for, for with Terminators is uh, anti-tank rounds, quite frankly. Now, when it comes to the games, that's absolutely not true. Because balancing. But in the lore, and it's shown really well right here, the Imperial Army have been trying for months to take this place, and they've been getting slaughtered trying to take this one bridge. And Terminators just walk up at no problem. They're like, ah, okay, oh, tink, 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 okay, whatever, fine, it's tinking off me, uh, fuck it. And they just keep going. And they, uh, it completely is negligible to them that it doesn't phase them in the slightest and it's really interesting seeing that because when they do the size comparison they say it's almost like a primark compared to an astartes or an astartes to a human most terminate most space marines and terminator armor to my knowledge are not as big as primarks in most cases if i remember right they are in between a prime in between most Primarchs and Astartes, but they aren't on Primarch level. A few individuals that I think would be would be someone like Ezekiel Abaddon, who is already a little taller than normal. It's mentioned that he is taller than Garviel Loken in the book. But shy of that, they're just really, really big. And they're beefy little shits. It's hard to put one down. I would say probably the next thing up the list as far as um, and it, this is crossing into vehicle territory that would be harder to take out or more armored I should say than a dreadnought would be or than a um, terminator would be a dreadnought. And that right there is um, that's Starting to cross into the walker vehicle area, but um, dreadnoughts are nasty little beasts when they uh, when they're used right. Something else we're shown is right before they commence the attack, Loken meets up with an Imperial Army soldier, and he informs him that the place is haunted, and. Again, this is also telling the Astartes, who have been brainwashed, 
into well i don't really necessarily know that they're brainwashed at that point but they've been altered both mentally and physically to be super soldiers uh telling him that oh yeah by the way i know that you don't believe in religions or spirits but hey this place is haunted and this goes against all of our beliefs even us in the imperial army being a part of the imperium this goes completely against our belief as well but hey just letting you know still haunted and uh and it really plays out kind of interestingly because eventually Logan starts hearing this voice to find out that it's a voice called Samus and we find out later on what Samus loosely tra translates into Cinderman and his group of remembrancers land on the planet and all of them are hearing the name Samus and they're trying to figure out who it is what it is you know what the hell is going on Cinderman looks it up and you Freddy Keela goes over to him like hey you know, d do you know what it is he just kind of chuckles and then shows in the legends or the history of 6319 that the Whisperheads is an area where the um, what's the word I'm looking for here the split between that world and the spirit world is thin and it's easy for spirits to cross over and Samus is the equivalent of what would be Old Earth's Satan and the uh, the funny thing is, for those of you who don't know, the warp in 40k is basically a world under our world. And the closer it is to the surface, the easier it is for demons to get through. So they're saying all this, it means the exact same thing, they're just using different words, and they don't know what it means yet, because the Emperor has kept everyone in the dark about chaos, so and the warp, so they really don't know what that means, they think it's just uh, almost to a level of lunacy. They think it's absolutely insane that people actually believe in <laughs> spirits. And there's no way that that's going to come back and bite them in the ass any, in any way, shape, or form. We can see that this is also a one-sided slaughter in favor of the Astartes. The rebels are firing at Logan, who is not in Terminator armor. He's in regular Astartes armor. And it just bounces off on me. He just turns around, just like dead. Kills two guys. I think it's uh, with the uh, with the swing of a chain sword. So I, I mean, it's like he's they're just butchering at this point these rebels. Something else really interesting that happens is that he talks to Nero Vipus. He's like, I think they're afraid of us. Yeah. But not the way you think. I think they're afraid because we're destroying their whole belief system. It, we're not just butchering them. We're showing them that this thing they believed for thousands of years is just not true. In fact, there's a guy who tells Loken to bless him. He's like, I can't. There's no such thing as spirits. It's like, But if you don't, the other world will shun me like I'm sorry it's just it's not true help me so when he says help me look it just cuts his head off because yes and he thinks that a merciful death is better than just letting him bleed out which debatable I would agree with that but debatable and he's uh, it's just it shows really how much Loken thinks about this you know like these people have got to be absolutely terrified not just that you know so many of them are getting butchered but that their beliefs could be fake we end this part with something a little interesting Savior Jubal messages back to Logan like hey I found something wonderful and strange you gotta come see this daddy daddy come look 
and uh, um, it's bad. So they come down, they go down basically to the middle of this mountain, or at least close to him too, where they see a drop, and all they see is black. And or uh, uh, Jabal, where's Halibor squad? If, look, look at the words, but J Jabal, you okay? Look at the words. And Logan goes up and he sees water dripping. No words, just water. And so he has Udon try and restrain Jabal. And when Udon goes up to restrain him, Jabal, quicker than any of the others can react, pulls his bolt gun up and puts a round. A basically, if I remember right, the equivalent of a 20 millimeter anti aircraft round. Uh, basically, a bolter is a fully automatic grenade launcher. Um, through Udon's face and kills him. Two more of Udon's squad try to restrain him and take a bolter round to the chest. Each. So, um, uh, Jabal has flipped it. He's, he's lost it. He's gone completely mad. He's insane. It's great and wonderful all at the same time for everyone. Well, no, for Jabal and not for everyone else. Oh, this is getting so good. We're about to hit one of the best parts of the book, but I'm going to leave you right there because that's where the book leaves me. So enjoy the cliffhanger, and tomorrow I will give you the next part about what happens to Captain Loken and the insane Xavier Jubal. Thank you all for watching the video. In the top left hand corner I will leave you with my most recent upload. In the bottom left hand corner I will leave you with the playlist that I hope you will enjoy. And right above my head here, I will leave you with the subscribe button. So if you like the content and want to see more, you can subscribe. Or if you want to see any more of my RPG or RTS content or my 40K lore videos, please subscribe. Check out one of my videos and playlists. And down in the description down here somewhere, somewhere, I don't know where, I will leave a link to my Discord and my Twitter, so if you have any ideas on ways I can improve, or if you want to just join the community, throw suggestions when you can, or suggest other games. Shoot, I'm always willing to take criticism on how to improve, and things I can do better for you, the viewers. That being said, I hope you all have a very wonderful, wonderful day, and I will see you all in the next one. Bye!